Well, this week I tried so hard to narrow these down. It was tough. That's how crazy this week got. And that's not even counting that West Virginia spill shit, because that's not really all that funny. That's just infuriating. But even still, I had to narrow down the shit. And it took some doing. Awesome. Are you ready for this? Because it's a lot of crime. This week is a lot of just straight up fucking crime. Well, good. It's crime week. Yay. Yay. All right. Let's let's get it started in here. Which is not the actual lyrics of the song. They can't put the real lyrics on the radio because they're exactly. Yeah. Why did you do that? Anyway. Each week, Catherine goes out. The worldwide interwebs finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings it back here for a little segment. We like to call what the fuck is wrong with you now. We've quite often on this show had to go through the cost-benefit analysis of any particular given crime. This seems to be a little equation that is not worked out by many a criminal, and in this case, really seriously not worked out. Um, Thief crashes into store... Steals single banana. Yeah, Connecticut. Connecticut. Hello, Connecticut. Not, not a lot to get excited about in the nutmeg state. I'll be leaving the nutmeg state soon. Yeah, so it's Long so Island. Not in the backyard anymore. Long Island. No, I'm not going to Long Island. I'm going to Westchester. Oh. Where the preppy people live. Newington, Connecticut, it was a fruitful heist, one could say, had a certain appeal. Who wrote this? Kevin Conlon. Go home! <laughs> Those are never funny, and you know it. Go home! Now! You think about what you did. <sighs> As in banana peel. Like, you couldn't guess that. Stop! He just keeps going. Uh, which a determined burglar in Connecticut left behind after repeatedly backing his station wagon through the door of a closed convenience store until he could get in and get the goods. One banana. The suspect selected a banana from the shelf. I am a banana. <laughs> Peeled and ate the fruit and then exited the store. No other items were taken in the burglary. Police were seeing a man caught in security photos, calmly enjoying a banana. There was probably somewhere that was open that could get a banana. Walmart! Love it or hate it or what the fuck ever, it's never closed! No, yeah, Walmart's closed here. The Walmart here in Danbury. Get the fuck out! Walmart. I know this because I picked somebody up from the airport once and they forgot... Or no, their bag didn't make it, so they needed some basics, and we went to Walmart, figuring Walmart's always open, right? No, Walmart had closed at 11, and we had to go to the all-night Walgreens in the ghetto, which was a fun experience. Yeah, Walmart's closed here. Diners close here, and I still, I've lived in this godforsaken state for 17 years now, and I still can't get the hang of the fact that the diners close. It makes no sense to me. Like, maybe that ex explains just it. Sometimes all, all I'm, a late night banana. All I'm thinking, did you ever see that bit from Des Despicable Me with the banana? I have not seen Despicable Me. All I'm thinking of right now are the minions with that. There's this big, long sequence where they completely wreak havoc on the lab over a banana. And I thought that was just a cartoon, you know. I will probably be much more familiar with children's pop culture because when I move to Westchester, I'm going to be living in the same house as my eight-year-old nephew. So I imagine I will become familiar with these things that I am not. But yeah, and, and people are, are pricing this shit out. 50 cents at most for a banana. Yeah. He did 
thousands of dollars worth of damage with his car repeatedly backing it into the convenience store. Although, did you know they're saying bananas are slowly mm. going extinct? I don't think that's why he did. This. No, yeah, bananas as we know them are becoming less and less common, I guess. And because of climate change and everything, it's getting harder to grow them. And supposedly in like 20 years or so, it may be really hard to get bananas. The price may go way up. Maybe he's from the future. Ring, ring, this ring, guy. ring, 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 ring. Banana felon. That was that was the A. Scott Jr. Maybe this guy's from the future where there are no bananas. And the first thing he did when he arrived back in 2014 had to be to get a banana. I need your clothes, your boots, and your banana. banana. And your banana. I mean, supposedly some guy from the future tried to stop the Large Hadron Collider, but I think that was an April Fool's joke. Didn't have much to say about the bananas. though. No. It would have been good to get his insight on bananas. Have you seen that... Um, that uh, JPEG that s- says uh, you may have you may have been high, but you've never been Johnny Cash eating cake in a bush high. No, you've never seen that one. It's beautiful. You should see it sometime. I can tell you of it, but that that doesn't explain its beauty. Well, that- I like Johnny Cash giving the finger. I think that's a good image for almost every situation. This guy wasn't quite that high, but. He certainly he gave it a run for its money. Um, police, I am an owl, says drunken driver hiding in tree. Northboro, Massachusetts, an alleged drunk driver arrested while hiding 30 feet up a tree on Friday, rambled on about being an owl when confronted. Troy A. Prockett, 37, our age, of Hudson was arraigned Monday on a slew of charges, including a third drunken driving offense, after town firefighters had to use a bucket truck to bring a cop 30 feet into a tree to arrest him. Documents uh, in Westboro District Court provide additional details about the unusual arrest, including the fact that police at one point feared the man's daughter may have been ejected from the vehicle. She wasn't. But um, according to police... Um, McCammon was driving west about 7 p.m. when he saw a white Nissan Maxima spinning out of control between the two travel lanes. Snow flew up in the air, McCammon wrote, that's the state trooper, as the Maxima hit a snowbank. Um, at least three other cars had to abruptly break and swerve. After the car did stop, the driver got out, ran in front of his cruiser, and then jumped the guardrail running down the embankment of the woods. They found Prockett's wallet inside the Maxima, which he said reeked of alcohol, on the station, learned uh, police had received a call from a gas station and reportedly saw a, dry, a drunken man driving the same vehicle with a child inside. Um, no kid, but uh, when asked to surrender, Prockett refused in, quote, very slurred speech, then asked if we caught the guy who was driving. Wait. He was drunk, but he had the presence of mind to try to blame someone else. Did you catch the guy who was driving the car that I came out of? Did you? And then climbed higher in the tree. I've never been too drunk to blame somebody else for my actions. When police informed Prockett there was only one set of footprints in the snow, Prockett reported, Prockett reported the driver, quote, had carried him on his back. It's like that footprints in the sand thing. <laughs> Jesus carried him. But apparently Jesus got fucking sloshed and totaled that car. Jesus took the wheel. And then Jesus carried him into the woods. I kind of can't make fun of this guy too much because I spent a good portion of last year trying to convince my nephew that I turned into an owl at night. <laughs> because he always <laughs> joked that like, I'm up all night and I sleep all day. And I told him, well, that's because I'm a night owl. So then he would say, I know why you're tired all day, because you're an owl. And that got extended into me trying to convince him that I actually turn into an owl at night. And 
he would say things like, but owls eat mice. And I'd say mice are delicious. And he'd go, ew. So. You're going to ruin that child. I'm trying. <laughs> so uh, I can't really make fun of this guy too much because Just I totally. But I, I'm like Calvin's dad. I tell those kids all kind of bullshit. Well, he had some I'm sort not of a parent. He had some sort of presence of mind here because he's already going. He's already playing the not me game. He's already in the family circus territory as it is. Well, you're never too drunk to blame somebody else. But but the, even Who's, who in the world has ever been too drunk for not it? <laughs> well, maybe this gets difficult, but a little bit. But not, not only that, his next plan was, OK. If I'm a bird, then legally they can't arrest me. This comes back to Twin Peaks because. Bob would not. The spoilers, this show's 25 years old, though. Bob, when not possessing a human, took the form of an owl so they could arrest him. But he would just bash his skull open on the bars and escape as an owl. He continually refused commands to climb down and said climbed even higher, shaking the branches and saying, look, it's snowing. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> OK, so this guy had not only were the cops out there, not only were the fire department out there, apparently they had to get the thermal helicopter to find his ass. Look, it's snowing. He's causing this three ring goddamn circus of public utilities and, and workers and shit. <laughs> God damn. The balls on this guy. Well, they're alcohol balls. <laughs> alcohol it's, balls. You know. That needs to that needs to be a term. Alcohol balls. Alka balls? Alka balls. Nah, it's, it's balls. I like alka balls. Alka balls? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm an owl. Oh my god. Just it's well, you know how you have to go to court if you've been accused of a crime. Normally, if you've been arrested and accused of a crime, blah blah blah. You know, unless you get Robert Forrester to disappear you to New Hampshire. Well, then you just get shot and killed. But no, no. In this case, it it's uh. It, you have to get to court. I understand that. I appreciate that. But maybe could you possibly, while you're on the way to court, not commit the same crime again? <laughs> Man steals truck to get to court for other stolen car case. Right in California. Man stole a truck so he can make it to court on time for his court hearing on an unrelated auto theft charge. The victim told police he was working on his 89 Ford Ranger when someone drove, jumped in and drove away. Officers located the truck with 21-year-old Michael Heller behind the wheel. When asked why he took the truck, Heller told police he needed to ride to court for a stolen vehicle case. I mean, he was trying to be responsible. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? Stole a truck to get to court for his stolen what, car. What's car. mystifying to me is the last. The last sentence of the article, given the headline. Heller was arrested on auto theft charges. Well, yes, we know. <laughs> I think they meant he was arrested again. <laughs> you got to clarify that. Uh -huh. At least he's punctual. <laughs> I mean, he was trying to be responsible. He was trying to make his court date. You don't want to be late, then you'll get in trouble with the judge. You know, even if you, okay. Even if you bring it back and say you're sorry, that's, it still counts. You're yes. still, you're still going to jail. Really only little kids get away with that. 
Yeah, it's it, you, you can't just like go, no, it doesn't count. I have my fingers crossed. It was. A, you gotta, you gotta embrace public transit or something. Yeah. Or make friends. Get a bus. Hell, if you really, really have to get a fucking taxi. Oh, great. Uh, uh, Madrid. Eh, they can't charge me again. Yes. No, no, that's not, how, that's not how double jeopardy works. <laughs> they can't charge you twice for the same crime. They can't charge you again uh, for stealing the car you stole the first time. They can charge you for stealing a whole new car. <laughs> but if you go to court and get acquitted on the first charge, they can't recharge you. No, it's not like you get immunity but from doing the same shit again. Car, they can charge you again. Right. It's not like. If you commit a crime once, you can just commit it with impunity forever. It would be a really scary world if that was the case. But it would be economical. I mean, I'm just OJ Simpson alone. Jesus. <laughs> I just I. His heart was in the right place. His head was straight up his ass. I mean, yeah. seriously, it was he. It would, he didn't even have to bend over. That was some yoga position shit to get his head up there. God I mean, damn! Bless, bless his heart. He meant well. <laughs> he meant well, but he. Oh, he's got. He need to get the concept down a little more firmly. Speaking of getting concepts down a little more firmly, have, have you ever actively um, enacted a lawsuit against anyone for any reason? Uh, no, I've been sued. <laughs> But normally when you do that, you understand what the point of going to court is. For example, if you're suing for damages, you have done something against you. Something's been done against you and you require monetary compensation, right? You understand? It's a simple concept. Yeah. You're being sued for alimony, you know, same kind of thing. You know, so you would think if you're going to walk into the court and you were the one initiating action, Everyone would be right in assuming you understand what you're asking for, right? Oh, I know where this is going. No, no, they would not be right. Lawyer sued for not advising woman that divorce would end her marriage. Yeah. An appeal of the dismissal of professional negligence claim against several London divorce lawyers contains an eye-catching paragraph which in which is revealed that the claimant sued because, amongst other things, the lawyers failed to advise her that divorce would mean the end of her marriage. Much of the most striking of Ms. Mulcaney's many allegations of negligence against her solicitors was that, having regard to her Roman Catholic faith, Mrs. Boots had failed to give her the advice, which was requisite in her view of her firmly held a belief that the sanctity of marriage, either in terms of the alternating of judicial separation, blah, 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 um, would, would inevitably bring about the final termination of her marriage, which she wished to avoid. Now, here's the good news. The Catholic Church does not recognize civil divorces. No. So if she's worried about her Catholic faith, According to the Catholic Church, she is still married until she gets an annulment. So, no harm, no foul, I guess. Like, according to the Catholic Church, I'm still married because I didn't get an annulment. Of course, if he goes and has sex with another woman, it doesn't matter because he's going to hell anyway. So, you know, because it's adultery. And yeah. All that so, works. that's the good news <clears throat> for Miss. Mass 2014. The bad news is she's a moron. What did she think? What? Why was she? What did? What did she think divorce was? Did she think that they were going to say no? Oh, she's right. While that there can be some value in that in any relationship, having someone step in and go, no, no, this is the correct party. That's, that's not marriage counseling. Right. That's not like, that's not court. Yeah, I don't know what exactly she thought she was filing for. 
I just wanted him to keep to stop put leaving this toilet seat lit up. Like, you don't file for divorce. Like, I don't. That's what I want to know is I want to know what she thinks divorce means. I what know. She thought she was filing for. Crazy dude. Maybe she thought divorce was a cake. Like, I. I maybe she was going for like a trial separation. <laughs> and overshot. I I don't know. What well, just the. the, the uh. How do you go your whole life without understanding what the term divorce means? I mean, really? Well, I guess if you're really, really, really Catholic. <laughs> I mean, my family's really Catholic. I'm the first person and even my extended family to get divorced. Like I am. I got the big scarlet D on my chest, mm. you know, so it's it's not a factor in everybody's life the way we assume it is nowadays. Uh, Some people really are that old school. Most of my family is really that old school. Some did she just hear the term somewhere and thought it sounded like a neat thing to do? Well, everybody else is doing it. We got to get one of them divorces. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, can we get a divorce for Christmas? Everybody else had one. It's actually not that fun. I don't recommend it. Well, I mean, if you're happy or, you know, whatever. You got to do what's right for you, but it's not a fun process. Speaking of not a fun process. It's not like um, going to a day spa. I should hope not. But where did the day spa come from? I'm just saying, you know, like it's not a fun, trendy thing you want to get because everyone else is doing it. Although... They should have little spa services and divorce court. I think that would make the negotiation go so much smoother. If you did little 10 minute massages before you sent everyone in to negotiate. No happy everything, ending, I hope. Everything would run a lot smoother. Yeah, but no happy ending. Well, I don't know. Yeah. So, Probably not. Yes. So, um, we're all aware of the big tragedy that happened in Japan what with the um, tsunami and the uh, Fukushima reactor and all that. And everyone thought, well, it, you know, shit happens. It's sad for them. Except maybe it wasn't all the tsunami. And this story, folks, if you know anything about science or engineering in the slightest, be prepared to lose your shit. Because I did. Um, X Fukushima worker says duct tape wire nets used to repair leaking radioactive water tanks. Tokyo Electric Power Company operator of the disaster stricken Fukushima nuclear plant has been in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. One of them, the continuous leaking of radioactive water into the ground beneath the plant into the Pacific Ocean. A former employee in the plant has come out saying that one of the reasons for the leaks may be the cost-cutting measures applied by TEPCO, such as using duct tape and wire nets to mend the leaking tanks. I really don't know anything about science, and that scares me. Yoshitatsu Uchi, uh, currently an auto mechanic and tour bus driver, worked at the devastating nuclear power plant between July uh, 2nd and December 6th. He claims he was one of the workers sent to work at the crippled nuclear plant on uh, 2012, specifically to take new storage tanks for the contaminated wastewater, water used to cool the molten cores down damaged ones. Um, 48-year-old former TEPCO employee said he was given a task to cover five or six storage tanks that were missing lids, he was instructed to use only four bolts on the lids that required eights. Adhesive tape was then applied to the other holes. He then pointed to other cost-cutting measures, such as the use of wire nets instead of reinforcing steel bars during the placement of concrete for the storage tank foundations. Also, water waterproof sheets of plastic were used the joints of these cylindrical tanks to save on the sealing agent. 
You can't fuck around with radiation, man. That's how Godzilla happens. This, that, 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 just that. And oh my God. You cannot fuck around with that shit. And they're already starting to get like mutated animals and stuff there. Like, yeah. And God knows what's going to happen to the people 10 years down the road. Like how many people are going to have babies with birth defects or die of bizarre cancers or whatever, you know, because they're already finding the effects in the animals. Computer Ronin wins. Don't worry. Duct tape is analog. Like, I, I kind of think maybe Apocalypse by Godzilla is looking more realistic than we all thought a few years back. Which sucks. I hope. I'm stomped to death by a giant lizard thing. Did but. they watch that Mythbuster special and think that was like a how-to guide for duct tape? They were doing that for entertainment purposes. What did they do with duct tape? Oh, they, they uh, put a car back together with it. They made a boat out of it. You know. You can get wallets made out of it now. Yeah. It was lots of cool shit, but that's not the basis for it. Well, they could build a boat out of it. it could, maybe it'll stop radiation, sure. Water and radiation, not really the same thing. I uh, just, god damn. Man, that's terrifying. Like, that's not even funny. Like, I, I have jokes. Someone thought this was someone in charge, someone who gets to make decisions about a nuclear reactor thought this good idea. Yes, but keep in mind, like that the person was also a bureaucrat and those people only care about the bottom line. Like this is true in pretty much every industry, no matter what job you have, you have at some point encountered somebody who you're trying to explain the correct and necessary way to do a thing. And they don't care because there's a cheaper way to do a thing. And they want you to ignore the correct and necessary way and do it the cheaper, stupid way, because that'll save them five cents. Will this is the reality in every job in the world. Everybody has been in this situation. If you've been working more than a year and a half. So, You'd like to think that shit doesn't happen at a nuclear power plant, but those Simpsons jokes don't come from nowhere. Will Jr., how do you say fuck it good enough in Japanese? Like, you'd like to think they're not plugging holes in the space shuttle with bubble gum? But do we know? We don't. We don't know. Yeah, but the thing is... <sighs> This guy gets to make decisions about a nuclear reactor. And he made really bad ones. Motherfucker. <sighs> it's bureaucracy, man. Someone comes down on you to save money. You're going to do stupid shit because you're supposed to save money. And that's more important than getting it right. And then what's when the whole thing goes to fucking hell again. They're just going to go. I, I, I. Jesus Christ. Our last one tonight. I, I think we may have even commented about this, someone doing this at some point. As a joke, as a thing that we, we just we thought, oh, well, this this must be a fetish somewhere. We we because it was one of those that just seemed so ridiculous that, that it could only be done in a comedy context, and the answer is no, no, it was I mean, not. We watched like a five minute video of a dude getting off on popping balloons with his thighs. So Swiss cheese pervert terrorizes Mayfair. This comes from Philadelphia. I think this got tweeted to us about. 60 times. Gentlemen prefer blondes. This guy prefers Swiss. All right, now that's funny. No, it's not. <laughs> that's stupid. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. It does, it's not, not hair. What's with the ad on the side? What one? I have ad blockers, so I don't see it. Oh. 
250 million Americans infected. And then there's this weird little diagram, white coated tongue, diarrhea, bloating, genital itching, fatigue, mouth ulcers, but it doesn't tell you what this affliction is. Just all the horrible ways maybe in which it, it's maybe fucking it, up the genitalia naked man. Maybe it comes from fucking Swiss cheese. Mayfair Town Watch reported yesterday as Facebook page that the, quote, Swiss cheese pervert has been terrorizing neighborhood women. According to the group, the suspect, a heavyset white man, estimated to be his late 40s, early 50s, approaches women while driving a silver or black sedan with his genitals exposed. He then displays a piece of sliced Swiss cheese and offers to pay the woman to put cheese onto his penis and perform sexual acts on him using it. It being the cheese. You know how we always say, if it has a hole, someone will try to fuck it? I'm feeling like cheese doesn't make very good lube. Like, that's gonna... <laughs> yeah, because Swiss cheese is... Rubbing. Like, Swiss cheese isn't a particularly greasy cheese. No, it's kind of, like, plasticky a little bit. Yeah. That's... Oh, Lady Disquette, that is not Gouda. That was awful. That was awful. You know, is it too much to ask for someone to brie a gentleman? This guy's a real monster. Here we go. The rails, we have left them. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just... <sighs> Yeah. No, no. Okay. Uh, Deck Crash said, Swiss cheese is many vaginas. No, it's not. It's not even one vagina. It's just holes. That's yeah. not the same thing. No. Just because you can put your dick in, it doesn't mean you should fuck it. Well, and... I guess that applies to people, too. But still! I mean, they're not big holes, either, so... Sorry, guy. Because, damn. I swear, I swear we, we said at some point, oh, somebody must be, you know, jerking off with Swiss cheese. I swear we've called this as happening. And now it has actually happened. We've come full circle. We're creating. Like, we've hit this metaphysical point where we're not just reporting on this stuff, we're making it happen. Oh, God, we're prophets. We're fucking prophets. We're prophets of people fucking things. Jesus! That might be the worst. Like, I would seriously rather be a straight-up, like, Cassandra type, <laughs> where I'm foretelling the fall of a city and no one believes me, than be the kind of prophet that knows when people are going to fuck cheese. I'm I'm just I'm looking at this guy. Am I the only am I the only one getting like a Peter Griffin vibe off this fuck? Just saying, a little bit. Imagine if you were standing at a stoplight and this fucker pulls up with you know, his cock in one hand and cheese in the other. He's like, ah, eh? ah. Eh? Wanna pull my string cheese? I'm amazed someone didn't just, you know, just go to town with him on, on a taser, you know? Doesn't anyone in that town have a cattle prod for fuck's sake? Who wants to get melted cheese all over their taser? Actually, people are going to say he looks more like Rob Ford. He does look he like does. Rob Ford. He does look like Rob Ford, yeah. And Rob Ford seems like the cheese fucking type, if we're being honest. He, it would not be the worst thing he's done. I, but, you know, this guy, this guy's a real American. Special circle of hell, Tara. <laughs> Special circle of hell. Come on, how can you resist that? You give me an opening I could drive a truck through. That's what she said? Yeah. 
mean, just keep them away from the laughing cows. They won't be laughing. They'll they'll be very they'll never they'll never laugh again. Very sad laughing cows. They'll be crying cows. I guess that's the first thing we like. That just because you can put your dick in it is not mean it's intended to be fucked. And what's more, don't share. It's not like a magic trick. It's like, hey, look, I could put my dick in a piece of cheese. Although if you, you can just jerk off with your Swiss cheese at home. Yeah, exactly. In privacy of your own home. If you really Swiss, need. Did you did you see I po- I tweeted an article from there's an NPR show called On the Media. Uh huh. That is exactly what it sounds like. And they did a whole thing on Florida and why such weird fucking shit happens in Florida. And part of the story was they talked to this guy who reports weird news in Florida. And he's like, yeah, they asked him. They're like, you seem to do a lot of stories about people stuffing meat down their pants. And I was like, holy shit. Why didn't they call us? I know this is this is what we do for. This is our thing. We're the experts on that shit. Of all the things in my life to be called an expert on. I tweeted it. I'll have to send you the link so you can. It's only like a 10 minute bit. But I was like, this is right up our alley. We could have done this story. We learned this week that for every achievement mankind has ever attained, there will be some idiot bean counter ahead above him. Making it awful. Yeah. Don't do it right. Just do it cheap. We learned that if you're going to go to court, you may want to invest in a dictionary. Dictionary.com is free. It does the work for you. It even has a spell check. So even if you don't know how to spell divorce, if you haven't heard the Travis Tritt song, don't ask me how I know that. Also, if you're going to court, you might want to get there in a legal manner. Or at least, you know, not commit the same crime on your way there. Yes, especially when you're already you're already in trouble for the same fucking. Well, haven't we done stories about people that got rung up for drunk driving and showed up to court drunk? Yeah. But that I can understand. Alcohol is an addiction. Stealing cars is is that it's not an addiction, is it? I think everything's an addiction everything's now. Everything's an addiction. Thanks now. to TLC. We've learned that just because you tell the police you're an animal doesn't mean you're you're not getting arrested. Because you're an owl. Even if you can make it snow. <laughs> you're not magic, you're just stupid. <laughs> Isn't that like every little kid when they find out they can do something, they think it's like they've created magic. They've like, I made a sandwich. Yeah. And it's like, it's the L like, I'm they look, I made snow. It's like Tom Cruise and Castaway. I made fire. No, you're you're just stupid. You're just really, really stupid. And of course, we've learned. If the cost of your crime far exceeds the benefit of your crime. At per- least take a whole bunch of bananas. Yeah, I know. One banana. The insurance guy is going to look at this shit and go, you staged this, right? No, the fucker. No, you staged this. One fucking banana. Maybe that was the best banana in the world. It better have goddamn been. Maybe that banana was his destiny. Banana. I I just. I, I mean, you can't just dole out a good banana to everybody. Some people have a special banana. Dole, really? Dole? Dole. I don't even think they do bananas, do they? 